you know, I had this all centered, and then right before uh, kickoff here, I had to move the this thing a little bit, and now the gap right there is a little larger than over there. Welcome in to the Fantasy Football Forge. My name is Steve, and in today's video, we will go over the one big thing for each team from the Thursday night football game to start off. Then we'll go through all of the um, inactives out, uh, you know, injury report guys from the week. Hopefully, I didn't miss anybody this week. I didn't get a chance to go and Google every single team's injury report like I usually do, so I trusted my notifications to keep me up to date on pretty much everybody. And at the end of the video, I will follow up on my DFS lineup of last week, let you know how that performed, and go over one that I have built this week for you. And of course, over on the side, you can see my most recent up-to-date rankings. Honestly, I would check them out Saturday evening uh, into uh, come visit me live one hour prior to kickoff on Sunday, half hour prior to the morning game, because there is still quite a bit that I am um waiting to to hear about in order to update some of the rankings but let's get started with the video on thursday night we saw new orleans face off against jacksonville and for new orleans my one big thing is when did Derek carr become such an angry little elf there are clearly frustrations across this offense and i think that people have a lot of uh, different people have different reasons and valid reasons each of them to be frustrated with this offense if they can figure things out in new orleans with that defense, they're going to be a very deadly team. And for Jacksonville, my one big thing is that uh, last week I was an outlier on how I ranked Calvin Ridley. Basically, I ranked him as no longer a must start or a should start more, probably a little bit more accurate. But I have heard other experts over the past day talking about how he's no longer that. And so they have gotten on the same page with me you are going to want to look at the matchups going forward if you are a Calvin Ridley owner. I almost called him Calvin Johnson. And and uh, your confidence level should be impacted by the matchup instead of just basically playing him regardless of matchup. Let's move on to the injury report. Go in alphabetical order here if you want to find anybody or any team that you're most interested in, what uh, the impacts I think of that are. So Chicago is the first team up. And both Roshan Johnson and Justin Fields are out. Roshan with the concussion. I have Deonta Foreman ranked as my RB22, and that's right between Jalen Warren and Javante Williams. I think he's a pretty decent start. I kind of like, I think I would start him over Rashad White, I think. I don't know. And so I don't, a lot of thinking to do with the rankings yet. And for Justin Fields, he is out with that thumb injury. The Bears have said they do intend to do not intend to put him on IR, which basically means that they think he should be able to return within three to four weeks at the latest. So hopefully for my fantasy team, that is the case. Then for Cleveland, Deshaun Watson is questionable with a shoulder injury. He is expected to be starting this week and we'll know for sure today at some point, according to Cleveland sources, but it's already been reported that he is expected to start. Since he is the starter, you're going to be a little bit more confident in starting Browns players, basically any of them. And I am not opposed to starting Deshaun Watson himself this week. A lot of people are in a pinches for quarterbacks, and uh, because there are so many, it might be hard to find someone. If he's sitting there out on your waiver wire and you're starting, well, you saw my rankings. Like, I have Desmond Ritter in. I would rather start Deshaun Watson this week. Maybe he does better. Maybe he doesn't than Desmond, but I'd feel a little bit better with Deshaun Watson. Then uh, Kareem Hunt is questionable with a thigh injury, so keep an eye on that, and I know... My ranking of Kareem Hunt feels low. I have reasons for it. I went over it a little bit in my running backs video. Um, we'll see if if I change my tune on that prior to Sunday. Then for Denver, Greg Dulcich is out with his hamstring injury, and he could be placed on IR today. So if you have any interest in that, keep an eye out for whether that happens or not. All right, we've got the wide receivers up over there now, and that brings us to Detroit. David Montgomery has been ruled out with his rib injury. No surprise there. And Craig Reynolds is questionable with a hamstring slash toe. 
If he is out, I don't think that the practice squad guys that they have pose much of a threat to Jameer Gibbs' workload, so I actually expect him to have a pretty heavy workload in that event. I think that I would move Jamar up a little bit more than where I have him currently in my rankings. I'm tempted to do that without Craig being out, but if he is, Jameer becomes a borderline must-start, despite it being a poor matchup, and I'm really banking on that work all in large part coming through the air. Then for Indianapolis, Kylan Granson, tight end out with a concussion. Las Vegas, Brian Hoyer is unofficially the starter this weekend per sources. And I think that this is good for the offense and the offensive weapons. And you can have some amount of faith in the targets of Brian Hoyer. And then for the Los Angeles Rams, Kyron Williams could go on IR at some point today. The team has not made up their mind if they're going to do that or not. So Keep an eye out for that if you're a Kyron Williams owner, and that might open up a spot for you to take on somebody else on your roster. We have now got the tight ends up over on the side, and New England, Hunter Henry, questionable with an ankle. Juju Smith, questionable with a concussion. Not a whole lot this week, luckily, for the injury report. And then for the New York Giants, Daniel Jones is questionable with a neck injury that has no impact on my wide receiver rankings for those guys. You're probably not starting them in either way, but they actually project better with Tyrod Taylor as their quarterback. So, you know, something to, um, I don't, yeah, I'm just not going to lower them or raise them because of Daniel Jones coming back. Pittsburgh, Pat Fryermuth is out with a hamstring injury. He retweaked that at practice on Thursday, just came back from that injury. That is unfortunate, and I do believe he is an IR candidate as well today at some point. And then we have the Monday night football game for San Francisco 49ers with a couple of big names. Both of them have not practiced yet this week, so that's two out of the three practices. Do not practice as Christian McCaffrey with his oblique injury, Debo Samuel with his shoulder injury. So it really looks like those are going to be game time decisions, which is the worst case scenario, so if you are able to, if you have any of the running backs, any of the three running backs for San Francisco, see if you can't figure out a way to have somebody that you would feel comfortable playing because in the event that you could play one of those guys, there's a decent chance that they're a pretty good start this week over what you might have. And if that's the case, then if, you know, if you're able to find a backup plan to move to, do so today. Maybe wait for some of those guys that are possibly going to go on IR to go on IR. You can put them in your IR spot instead of cutting somebody. Uh, keep that in mind as well. And yeah, so Debo Samuel, Christian McCaffrey, I think it's going to be a game time decision. Keep an eye out for news today. Practice report. One more practice today that will be telling if they do not participate again. That would be a big deal. And if uh, you know, maybe we'll get news before game time on Sunday, which once again, I'm here live on YouTube for any start sick questions, and I keep an eye out for all that kind of news that sometimes pops up before kickoff. And last up, we have Seattle, and pretty big one here. Uh, first of all, Zach Charbonnet, questionable with a hamstring injury. That's not really huge for fantasy. Might help Kenneth Walker a little bit in an already great week. But DK Metcalf, questionable with a hip injury. It's being reported that this is going to be a game-time decision for him. And so uh, Tyler Lockett is already ranked quite highly for me. This would move him up a few spots ahead of Mike Evans uh, in that event. I don't have the wide receivers up, but moves him up like three spots for me. I would feel a little bit more comfortable with him than Mike Evans, uh, just as far as the floor goes at least. And Jackson Smith and Jigba would become a borderline slash back end wide receiver three for me, where he's solidly into wide receiver four territory for me right now. I'm not going to be overly excited about like three more targets for JSN is roughly what I figure it would be. But neither would be I be afraid to start him. That would be eight targets, just not a huge A dot or anything like that. Still, it's a good matchup against Arizona, so things way out. He'd be an all right start. And let's move on to how I did with my DFS lineup last week. Let's get my new one up. All right, so there's this week's. So I'll go over that in just a moment. But last week, uh, Mostert, Thielen, Bourne, Kendrick Bourne all carried my roster to one that could beat most lineups. It was in the top 11 to 15 percent of lineups based on two tournaments that I had entered it into large large tournament those free ones it did not place but uh, in the the next up larger tournament but not a huge tournament um, it did place in there moving on to this week there is my lineup so I started off uh, with Jordan Love at 5800 going up against Denver and quickly matched that up with Christian Watson as his his running mate for this lineup at 5600. Once again, going up against Denver, really want to attack that matchup, and a lot of upside there that uh, could pop off. Then for the running backs, 
should I go over this how I built it? So that's where I started. Then I think I might have put Rasheed Rice in next or more likely I think I jumped down at that point and just filled out my DST. I like to see um, you know, how much money I have remaining after I've gotten rid of the DST spot because that costs quite a bit and I also like to see if I've spent up for my DST or if I found someone I was comfortable with spending a little bit down on and at 3300 bucks. I think that the Browns could absolutely crush against Indianapolis and really, really frustrate Gardner Minshew this week. So I like the opportunity there for a pick six, maybe two even, and I'm, I'm going to take my shot at that. So then I knew, hey, you know, I'm doing pretty good on the money here. Spent up on Josh Jacobs at that point at 7,400 going up against Chicago. Smash hit there. And then I think that's when I came down, filled out my wide receivers here. Um, and oh, I always do my tight end early too, and I felt it was worth spending $5,700 up on Mark Andrews going up against Detroit. Really good tight end matchup. So spent up there. Then I, yes, I wanted to see if I could find a couple of wide receivers that I felt comfortable with going on the cheaper end. So Rasheed Rice at um, 4700 versus the Los Angeles Chargers, I liked quite a bit. A lot of upside there. You know, could be a high scoring affair. I also think. A backdoor upside here with the addition of Mikkel Hardman. Could they go back a little bit to more of their 2022 offense, which I think was a little less frantic in how often they were taking guys on and putting them back on the field, off and on the field? I think it was a little bit more steady. Maybe get Rishi Rice back on the field to like 10% more of the time. I think he would be in that juju type of role in that event if they start to work that kind of offense. Just a thought, just a thought, that's all. And then Curtis Samuel... I talked about this a little bit with the wide receiver video going up against New York Giants. feel comfortable that uh, they'll probably attack the Giants in the short to intermediate uh, area of the field a lot, and I think that that's where Curtis Samuel, Logan Thomas, had the best chances of um, getting, you know, doused with targets, and DK is full PPR, so took my shot there, and that left me with uh, quite a bit on Kenneth Walker that I was able to spend, so I spent up for him at 7 thousand uh going up against arizona smash match up there and then went down and looked at what i was able to get with the money left and i was able to get jameer gibbs at 6300 felt good with that had 200 dollars remaining on the salary don't know where to put that so i'm hoping once again jameer gibbs is able to get it done through the air ppr points would be king and uh that's my lineup thank you very much Please like, comment, subscribe, and uh, come visit me Sunday, one hour prior to kickoff, half hour prior to the, the first set of the first game in the morning, London. I think there's one more of those. <laughs> I still haven't checked. All right, peace out.